Hello, good morning. Long time no vlog. Um, I'm a bit rusty, so bear with me. I also, there's been a lot of changes since I have last vlogged. I'm realising, I think I'll maybe do like a cosy self-care vlog, catch you up on the changes. Um, I cut a lot of my hair off. It's not this cute, layered, fluffy, bouncy situation. I pierced my nose. I have a septum piercing. I don't remember if you saw that. Um, I can move twice. Woo! So I am live, laugh, loving, living my best life. And I'm extra live, laugh, loving today because I am going to Edinburgh for a little day trip. And I thought that was a perfect excuse to bring you along with me and do a little book shopping vlog in the gorgeous Scottish capital. I'm very biased. I love Scotland. I adore Edinburgh. And it has some of the bookshops, best bookshops. I can't speak. It's too early. Um, some of the best bookshops I've ever been to. But today I'm planning on going to Waterstones, Princess Street, like the huge one where the cafe has like an overlook over the castle. I love it so much. I'll have to insert a picture here actually, but I have a picture there. The first time I ever went to Edinburgh, uh, sitting with a little coffee and it made me realise I wanted to move to Scotland. I love that trip so dearly and that picture in the Waterstones Cafe always makes me really, really happy. So I'll pop a few of those in there because I take pictures in there every time I am there. So I, I, I'm biased, but I love that Waterstones. And two, I'm hoping to go to Golden Hair Books in Stockbridge, which I've never been to. So it will be a newbie, but a very exciting one nonetheless. Aside from that, I don't know what the plan of the day is. I'm technically technically not meant to be buying books um because I filmed a video which I think you've seen before this one of my mid-year reading wrap-up and I have beautiful beautiful floor-to-ceiling bookshelves but I have not read a lot of the books on them which is really really bad that like look at all these beautiful shelves they're so beautiful and I am read half the books. So I shouldn't really be buying books, but if I tell myself I'm on a book buying ban, I won't stick to it. I'll simply buy books because I don't like strict rules and strict limits. I'm an Aquarius. I like my freedom. So it's not a book buying ban, but I shouldn't be buying books. But I excuse the line at like indies. So go and hire books. Supporting an indie, supporting a bookstore. That's super cool. So I allow it and Waterstones I get points. Not as good of a logic, but regardless, I plan on buying at least one book today. So, without further ado, I've been talking to this camera for too long. Let's go to Edinburgh and I'll update you along the way. I'm back in the comfort of my home. For some reason, sitting on the floor seemed the most appealing thing to do right now. So enjoy this view of my sofa behind me. We are sitting on the floor, girlies. Cozy vibes to sit and chat. Oh, I can't show you yet about books. I have taken you all around Edinburgh with me today. Went to some beautiful bookshops, Golden Hair and Waterstones in Princess Street as predicted. The cafe was closed by the time I got there. So I don't have any gorgeous castle footage, but I promise you the view was still beautiful, even if I only saw it from very far across the cafe. But I will start with my Waterstones books because in Golden Hair, I got a mystery book and I have waited all day to open this so I can open it with you. And if you know me, I'm not patient one bit. So waiting like 12 hours to open this has been intense and I didn't think I could do it, but I have. Um, I'm also terrified 
since it's a mystery book that I already have it. So I've been living in fear and anxiety. Nice. But first of all, this one was a pound and it's one I'd never heard of before. It's called Dead Man Talking by Roddy Doyle. I think it's like the reading agency are doing like quick reads. But this is about like two friends who haven't spoken since they were kids. They had a big argument and they've fallen out. Um, they haven't spoken since the day before Joe's funeral. What? The day before his funeral, Joe would be dead, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. It's meant to be fast paced, funny, and a little bit spooky. And for a pound, it was too good to pass up. And I liked this kind of idea of like a quirky storytelling kind of thing. It sounded fun. Another one that's maybe a little bit quirky and one I've heard really good things about and I was so excited whenever I saw it, it was finally out in paperback, is True Biz by Sarah Novick. But True Biz is an adjective slash exclamation in ASL, which means really, seriously, definitely, real talk. True Biz? The students at River Valley School for the Deaf just want to hook up, pass their history finals and have politicians, doctors and their parents stop telling them what they need to do with their bodies. So. We have this book which follows three different people um, that go to the River Valley School for the Deaf. We have one of the names again, I can't remember names to save my life. Charlie, a rebellious transfer student who's never met another deaf person before. Austin, the school's golden boy whose world is rocked when his baby sister is born hearing. And February, the hearing headmistress, a coda, child of deaf adults who is fighting to keep her school open and save her marriage at the same time. As far as I know, all of their lives are going to be like interweaved. As a series of crises, both personal and political, threaten to unravel each of them, they all find them, their lives intrinsically linked to each other and changed forever. But one, like, how beautiful is this cover? You're getting like, some weird lighting in the back of it, but gorgeous. And the next one is Beautiful Shining People, which I have seen all over the place, um, but haven't been able to see in the UK, actually. I've only seen American Pals have this one. I think it's our world, but decades into the future. I think this is a kind of, like, sort of sci-fi, sort of literary fiction book set in Japan because we're going to travel all around Japan like at the end of it it goes from Tokyo to Hiroshima's tragic past to the snowy mountains of Nagano. I love Japanese fiction, I love sci-fi and I love lit fic and I love this beautiful cover. So will be read soon. I think I'm going to read both of these soon. I know that's very bold of me to say considering I literally talked earlier in this video but I haven't read any of the books I own but True Biz seems a kind of like light-hearted, fast-paced thing they'll pick me up. I looked at my shelves the other day and I realised I don't read anything light-hearted at all. Like I finished The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova and it was it was okay. I liked it but I didn't love it. Um, but it was it was heavy. It was like academically dense which was kind of like the point of it. Both like the father and the daughter were academics but it did not float my boat. And I wanted something really light after that and I realised I had nothing so I had to borrow Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Fritcher from my bestie. Which, mwah, Tilly, I'm so grateful for you for lending me that one, it's been so much fun. But yeah, I've been on the hunt for lighter stuff. And talking of lighter, I once again haven't done it. My golden hair mystery book is a cosy crime. How cool does that sound? So they these come beautifully wrapped with a little blurb, which I will read for you. The definition of cozy crime. Cuddle up with this detective puzzle and have a cup of tea. It's the perfect recipe for a day well spent. Does that sound like a bit of me? Or does that sound like a bit of me? A cup of tea in a book? A cozy crime? Um, I will continue reading the rest of this blurb in two seconds, but I adore cozy crime. It is a subgenre I am trying to get into so much more. Richard Osman's the kind of like Thursday Murder Club series. Mwah, j'adore. Also love Only Murders in the Building, the TV show, and I've desperately been trying to find books that replicate the feeling that that show gave me. So, maybe this will be it. Told from the perspective of an accessory to a small town murder, this is detective fiction at its best. Part of a series can be read independently. So, I obviously was sold because I love series, I love cozy crime, and I love a mystery book. I just need to rip it. Ooh. Oh, she's beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay, Double Tragedy. 
The Affair at Little Wokeham. Inspector French. I just said j'adore. Did I predict it? Did I predict it was going to be something French? <laughs> Maybe. When Dr. Anthony Malaby settled down to a practice in the tiny village of Little Wokeham, the idea that he could ever become a willing accessory to the crime of murder has never crossed his mind. That he, always so law-abiding, should see the day that even the sight of a policeman would fill him with the dread was an absurdity. Until now. And when the police... I can't speak. When the policeman is Chief Inspector French, he has every reason to be afraid. This sounds so cute! And look how nice like the spine is. Like That's going to sit so beautiful um, on my shelves. I'm delighted, actually. This sounds so cool. And I had never heard of it before in my life. So, extremely successful. What a win! I was terrified that I was going to have already read the mystery book because that's a really big fear of mine that I will get a mystery book and open it and it's something that I already own um so I, I don't get them very often but it has been a win the whole day has been a win actually like look at all these bugs so cute um I'm very happy I know I think I officially do need to start a book buying ban but I'm glad I did it because it's made for a really fun video and I'm loving being back at sitting talking to the camera. I was rusty earlier but it feels totally natural now. I am going to head to bed because my 6.45 alarm for work tomorrow is coming too quick but mwah, I have enjoyed making this video so much. I hope you've enjoyed watching it too. See you soon.